Alright, so now we're going to start setting up a human figure. And the way I normally like to start, I normally like to start with the head. Just because that normally just shows direction and pretty much almost shows what the figure is doing already before you even get started. So here's the head here. Here's the center line where the eyes would be. You could imagine that wrapping around. Here's the head. And then here's where the shoulders would be. And we're gonna do we're gonna do a figure of a guy who's running. So when you're running, you know your shoulders are never are never just uh, stationary. They're not normally, you know, their shoulders wouldn't be like that if this was your head. You know, they're not gonna be like that. They're gonna be offset because you're putting your weight um, on different feet, and part of your chest is gonna be going one way, and the other part of it's gonna be going a different way. So the figure's a little bit complicated in that in that sense. So this arm here is going to be kind of coming forward. This is going to be the arm that's that's kind of pumping. Let's set that up. Again, all these uh, circles are going to be different joints. Whenever I do um, shoulder joints, I like to give them a kind of an oval shape so that I know which way the arm is going to be going. I already know this arm is going to be coming forward like this, and that one's going to be kind of still kind of pumping backwards. Maybe, maybe this this would be in a fist. And this is just kind of a rib cage line. And this would just kind of show where the the chest is going to be. Gonna be there's these little tendons in the neck that, that come down. And I can start filling in the form once I know where these appendages are gonna be. So I just start filling it in. I've drawn a lot of figures so I know where the, this mass is gonna be going. It's not going to be going. This is just kind of a rough outline where things are going to be. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of draw the spinal cord, which is normally just kind of a general curve. Hips. We know one of these hips are going to be forward, and the other, the other hip is going to be going back a little bit. And then we know this whole leg here is going to be coming forward. And this part's going to be really dark, as well as this hand here, because these are what's closest to us. Whenever I do these calf lines, I always make them a little bit. Um, I may always make them bend a little bit backward, just because that's just kind of where the mass of the whole leg goes. You always want to do these lines where pretty much where the center is of that mass is going to be. So I know this leg is going to come pretty evenly around that line that I just made. The same goes for this leg. And feet, which are normally pretty difficult to draw, um, can be made pretty easy when you just keep in mind that they go up and then they go go in a little bit, which is a little bit odd to, odd to draw sometimes. And this leg is going to come down behind this, behind this other leg. And that leg's going to be coming down like this a little bit. Again, that leg is a little bit curved out like this, just because that's how the calf 
is. This foot touching the ground just with the toes. Okay, so now that that's all set up, we can go in and start figuring out where things are going to be. So, dominoes are going to be right here. And this arm is closest to us, so I'm going to start darkening that one first. So in, in, in the forearm, there's, there's pretty much a, uh, this large muscle here. I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the name of it, but it comes right here, and then it kind of curves inward, and so do the other. There's a bunch of little long muscles as well. And those will curve towards the top of your where your hand would be. And they make a little bit of an indent just back where the elbow is. So when I start to shade this, that's going to be a dark spot. I'm going to come up and get the bicep here. Yeah, normally what I like to do with biceps is I, is I just kick them out forward and I just kind of keep them straight for the most part, unless they're really, um, unless they're really bent, unless I'm really bent, then it'll be a lot more bulbous. Deltoids just kind of come up right on top of those. This shoulder muscle will be just kind of set into the deltoid, and then the deltoid will come out on top of it. It's also important to remember that the deltoid's sh kind of sectioned in itself. There's different parts, so this part here is going to bulge out a little bit more. This is all anatomy, so this is just going to. We're going to pretend this guy has zero body fat and draw him as he would so that we can show all the muscles and all the tendons which are underneath them. There's the fist. Darken this line a little bit just because I know this is closer to us. And this shoulder muscle goes behind the neck, so the neckline comes out. Here, which is at just at the very top of the chest, which goes into the shoulders. And that kind of outlines the top of the pectorals, which I'm drawing right now. Which kind of fold inwards towards the deltoid. And you can see where the ribs stop and then there's this muscle which is right behind right behind them which is on your back. And those will stick out a little bit. 